We've got fallen angels, archangels, and even Lucifer himself to talk about today. So let's dive right into the top 10 real demons that terrify the Catholic Church. Have you ever had an encounter with a demon? Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have Abiz the Boo. This fallen angel is described in the Testament of Solomon. He is said to be one of the angels that followed Beelzebub upon his fall from heaven. He is the sin of pride and is known for his ability to lead people astray. He is most easily summoned in the month of July during the fifth hour of the night. After his fall from grace, he was left with only one red wing and was condemned to hell. A beast, the Boo is said to have control over the imprisoned souls of the underworld, and he plays a primary role in the demon world. A beast, the Boo himself claims that he was once an angel in what is referred to as the first heaven, and after his fall, he began to roam Egypt. It is said that he was caught in the collapsing of the Red Sea, which left him crushed, and subsequently imprisoned in a pillar of water. But despite this seal, Beelzebub claimed that, quote, when he is ready, then he will come in triumph. In our number nine spot today, we have Baal. Before I dive into this one, guys, please don't forget to hit that like button. It really helps us out. Baal is ranked as the first of the Ars Gotia, and he is the principal king of hell. It is said that he governs somewhere from 66 to 250 legions of demons and spirits, so he's clearly a workaholic in the darkest sense. In grimoire tradition, it is said that Baal appears in the forms of a man, a cat, a toad, or different combinations of those with the appearance of a king or soldier, but with the heads of these creatures and on a set of spider legs. So I'm just saying, the guy's not easy to miss. I feel like that's pretty clear exactly who that is. In our number eight spot today, we have Samael. Samael is an archangel whose name means the venom of God, the poison of God, or the blindness of God. He's not just any old archangel, however, he is the archangel of death. This means that he, of course, has taken lives under the orders of God. It is said that his method of doing this is confronting those he's been told to kill with his sword drawn. On the tip of the sword is a poison so that when the target gets cut, this wound may not kill them, but the poison will ensure a slow and painful death. Pretty dark. Right? In Hebrew lore, Samael is the prince of demons and the executioner for the death sentences handed out by God, and he is also known as the seducer. This is because he doesn't just kill people, he seduces them into sin, and then once they've sinned, he then gets instructed to kill them. It's like a weird sort of gaslighting situation. In our number seven spot today, we have Amon. Amon is the great marquis of hell, and he is the seventh of the demons in the Ars Gotia. It is said that he is in charge of governing 40 different legions of demons, but his favorite thing to do with humans is making them fall in love with each other. He is also known to settle debates, and you might be sitting there thinking that this guy actually sounds pretty cool and nice, but despite these cool and nice things he can do and enjoys doing, he is anything but nice. Just like he can make people fall in love, he can do the exact opposite as well. He can cause people to turn against each other and can even will someone to harm the innocent, which is terrifying. To make that thought slightly less horrifying, it is said that he doesn't usually do this for no reason and usually only does this when attacked or if someone is standing in his way of completing a mission. Still not good, but I suppose that's a little better than just random acts of violence. It is said that Amon appears as a wolf with a snake's tail and that he possesses the ability to breathe fire. Or sometimes he will appear as a man with dog teeth who is inside of a raven. I don't know. Ask him about that one, not me. In our number six spot today, we have Belphegor. Belphegor is a fallen angel, and after his fall from heaven, he has now become the demon lord presiding over the sin of sloth. It is said that Belphegor served as a lieutenant from hell. He was sent to earth on a mission by Satan. While he was on earth, he grew quite fond of Paris, France, and it is said that because of this affinity, he now lurks deep within the catacombs under the city. Belphegor can be invoked by mortals who are wishing to find fame and wealth, usually through as little effort as possible. But these wishes are of course doomed to fail because of the demon's true mission to lure the dreamers into sloth. Through the failure of whatever was provided to the dreamer by Belphegor, he then draws them into procrastination and idle dreaming rather than the act of production, which then condemns them to a life of failure. Belphegor is also recognized as one of the seven great kings who rule over hell. In our number five spot today, we have Lucifer. Lucifer was an angel before he fell from grace. In the book of Isaiah, it says, quote, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning, how art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? Lucifer is now the ruler of hell, and he commands an entire army of sinners and demons, and he even tried to organize an uprising against God. So I think it's pretty clear exactly why he is a terrifying entity. He 
also uses his power to send terrible people to Earth in order to terrorize everyone, as well as to try and tempt non-sinners into the dark side. It is said that Lucifer also might just be the one who is responsible for the original sins that were seen in the Garden of Eden. Some believe that he is the snake who placed the temptation. In our number 4 spot today, we have Beelzebub. Beelzebub is a former seraph who turned into a high-ranking demon. He is one of the princes of hell and also oversees the Order of the Fly. He, Satan, and Lucifer form the Triarchy of Hell, which makes him one of the supreme monarchs of the underworld. As a seraphim, he was under the Archangel Gabriel, but he was one of the very first angels to fall. Beelzebub is often confused with Satan, and while the two names can technically be interchanged, they are two separate entities, and in some writings, they even disagree at times. Beelzebub is associated with pride and gluttony, and he has also been held responsible for demonic possessions throughout the years. Unfortunately, flies are a very important thing for him, as it is said that he can take the form of flies. Now his main job is to rule over the fallen angels as well as all the demons that are originally from hell. In our number 3 spot today, we have Asmodeus. Asmodeus is the king of demons and earthly spirits and is often referred to as one of the seven princes of hell. He also represents one of the seven deadly sins, lust. Before becoming a demon in his former life, he was an angel who was known as Asmodel, the angel of April and patience who rules the zodiac sign Taurus. But of course, we are here to talk about his demon form, which is said to appear either as a ruthless, brutal monster or as a kind of mischievous demon that is playful and quick thinking. Honestly, I'm not sure which form would be worse to encounter. The monster would be scary, but a little annoying demon would be the worst. For the most terrifying exit I've ever heard of, it is said that Asmodeus will cut himself into pieces and immediately after disappear. In our number 2 spot today, we have Azazel. Azazel is one of the chief governors of the Gregori, which is a group of fallen angel who married female mortals, which then produced the Nephilim, which were these scary giant creatures that ate mortals. In the beginning, Azazel started as an eater of sins, but the more sins he consumed, the hungrier he became, and this led to him not being satiated by the sins he was receiving. The reason he was cast from heaven is because he taught men how to make swords, knives, shields, and breastplates, which then led to humans being corrupted and thinking that they were invincible. It is said that the humans went so far that they were planning to raid heaven, and this is when God told Raphael to bind Azazel's hands and feet, open up a hole in the desert, and toss him in, casting him into darkness. This worked, and for a long time Azazel remained in prison. It was so bad that the jagged rocks near him tore his physical body away, and this left him as a mass of darkness covered in mouth and eyes. Later freed by Lucifer, he went on to join the demons in hell. In our number one spot today we have Asbeel. Asbeel had to be included on this list today if for any reason because his name literally means God Forsaken or God Deserter. Asbeel appears in the Book of Enoch and is the Angel of Ruin and one of the fallen angels from the Gregory. After leaving the angelic post and straying from the angelic duties, Asbeel dedicated his life to leading humanity astray. Asbeel completely abandoned God and his grace and wishes nothing from him. Asbeel believes that God is basically just another common celestial who has hoarded all of the power at the expense of the rest of creation. During and after his fall, Asbeel questioned why God wouldn't just completely remove any evil and malice in the hearts of his creations. And this led to him believing that God was a tyrant who only cared about worship and praise. That's it. Bye.